Hello everyone and welcome to your uh, webinar with caterer.com. Today what we're wanting to do is run you through some tips and techniques in searching our CV uh, database and looking at different ways of helping you search and find the right candidates. So hopefully you're all set up uh, with your own access to the caterer.com site. If you aren't or you need some help with this, um, please do contact your account manager and we'll make sure that is all set up for you. What we're hoping to do today is run you through some different searching tools and techniques, um, whether you are somebody that has uh, done a lot of searching or whether you are brand new to search. Our tool is really designed to help you out either way. And we will look at some different strategies and different methods of how you can find the right candidate faster. So what I'm going to do is share my screen with you here today and you'll be able to see what I see and we can run through some searches together. So this is the, the page that you'll come to once you log into the caterer site. And this is our main search screen. Now, it can look a bit daunting, but the thing to remember in the way that this has been set up is that if you've ever searched for anything online before, a really similar strategy uh, will apply. What we're looking to do is find a broad term, so a job title, for example, you might be looking to find chefs. And then we'll look at different ways of filtering that candidate pool down to help you target the right right sort of people uh, that you are looking for. Lots of people have searched before on Amazon or Ricardo or any sort of online shopping uh, type mechanism. And this is really similar. So if you've done that before, you'll be able to use our system. Candidates really like being contacted this way. It just enables them to or you to pick out exactly who you would like to see rather than waiting for people to apply to an advert that you have written. So having a double uh, pronged strategy uh, for approaching candidates is what we would recommend. So to start off your search, what we would do most commonly is put some keywords in here. The most common keywords that people are likely to use is, is a job title, as we've said. So if you want to look for, say, a chef de partie, you would type it in here and it will start to suggest other terms to you that we believe are linked to chef de party. Uh, you could put lots of other characters in here, but we'll talk about that later. Let's start this out as a simple search. So you'll see the search type below is selected as smart search. What that means is that when, a ca when you've typed in chef de party, we'll look for all of the other terms that could also mean the same thing. So it will also search CDP, for example, it will search chef de party spelt with a Y, a party chef, as we say, uh, just in case a candidate has spelt something wrong. So what smart search is doing is we are trying to find you more results uh, with what you've put in. So you don't need to worry about putting in all of the variations of that job title. When you have smart search there, we will do that for you. If you would like to turn this feature off or make it a true Boolean search, what you are welcome to do is flip this button here to exact match. What exact match does is it will look only at exactly the term that you've put in. So we won't try and be clever or find you anyone else in the background. It will do just as it says on the tin. For most of your searches, we would advise leaving it on the default, which is smart search, because that way we will try and match you to more relevant, uh, you know, broader results. The other things that you could put in the keywords here, uh, you also might want to put a skill in. So the way to do that is what we call a Boolean search, which simply means that you can use one of the following words. So you can use the word and, or you can use the word or. Those are the co most common ones. So if I put chef de party and I wanted a chef that has also worked with pastry or patisserie, I might put pastry like that. And what that will do is it will search that job title grouping and also that keyword. So that might be an example of something that you might want to try. You could also put a company name in here. So I'd like to see uh, the word chef de party in a CV, but I would also like to see people that have worked at the Hilton, for example, and that could also be a keyword that you would put in that box. Um, this box here, even though it looks quite small, is actually really long. It's 3,000 characters long. So what that means is if you have lots of company names you would like to search or lots of skills in particular that you're looking for, if you just separate them out by writing and or or, you can, you can really search for whatever you would like in there. Um, however, it is important to remember the simple search is sometimes the best, and it's definitely best to start with a simple search. What we like to think of searching as is like a funnel. So you want to start quite broad with your search term and then narrow it and filter it down, and that will give you much more options to play with. And once we uh, have run the search, I'll show you how you can adjust that and make it more accurate to what you're looking for. 
So once we've got your keyword in there, the next thing to select or that you have the option to select is the location that you would like your candidate to be in. You can put a postcode in here. Uh, however, not all candidates will give us a postcode, so you will miss out on them when you're searching. So sometimes searching by desired location and selecting as many different options down here as you would like could be a good start. So for an example here, I'll put London. Um, and that will select all nine variations of locations in London. We do um, make candidates give us a desired location. It will also mean that if your candidate might be based in Manchester, but looking to move to London, for example, this will ensure that you find them as well. Once you've put your location in here, you can choose to search in two different things. So the default is to have it by profile and CV, which means we're searching all of the content of what the candidate has given us to find you the right person. You can also make the search job title only, which if you only have a job title in that keyword box can also be a good way to search. I would suggest starting with the default settings just because this will make it broader and you can always change them or narrow them down once you run your initial search. You can also pick how long you would have liked that candidate to have been active within. So for example, if it was an urgent role, you might need somebody that has been active on the site in the past few days because that will give you uh, the most readily active or available candidates. However, if you're looking for a quite a difficult role, say a managerial role or something that requires uh, broader results, it can be helpful to look at all or 12 months and then narrow it down from there. For the sake of today, let's leave it as six months. So that's, that would be a really good initial search to run if you were looking for a chef de party. There's also an advanced search option, which just gives you some different boxes that you can include if you like. However, what I would say is the more of these boxes you include, the more you're going to narrow your search initially. So sometimes leaving these broad, at least to start with, can be a good idea. One box that people do like to tick um, quite often is eligibility to live and work in the UK. This is just what the candidates told us, but can be useful if you're filtering by certain things. You also have a few other different filter options in here by country of residence or even a position or job type to help you narrow down your search initially. Once you've put all the criteria in that you want, you can click search. And this is the next page or the next screen you'll come to. So each, so this is telling me that I have uh, quite a big candidate pool to start off with and uh, the criteria that I've put in here. So once you've got to this page is where you can start making things really interesting and getting quite specific for the sort of role that you're recruiting for. Um, down the left hand side, you'll see there's a whole lot of boxes with lots of different filters. So you can start to narrow down um, on these filters based on what you're looking for. The one, the filter that people use the most often or that they've told us is the most helpful is current job title. So current job title is what that person is currently doing. So for example, uh, I might narrow that down to just people that are currently in the job title chef de party, which has brought that search down to 983. If I had put that initially just in that job title only box, I might not have seen uh, some of these other options, which could have been really good for my role. Say chef de party hotel might have been a, an option that I would also look at for this position. There's other filters down the left hand side as well um, that you can uh, narrow down by. But the most common ones that people tend to use is that current job title and also the last activity and location. So those are some really good options of how you can narrow your search criteria down. You'll see that now there's a list of candidates that's come up. So that, that list is uh, being built to meet the criteria of what you've put in when you've been searching. You can filter that list or sort it by bringing the most active people to the top by changing it to last activity or when somebody's last updated their CV. The others I feel are better to be done in the filters. So just leaving that as relevance can be a good option as well. So you'll see there's a brief kind of candidate summary um, on the front page. So for this candidate here, for example, so we've got their job title, the desired job title, and a little blurb that they've written about themselves. From here, I can choose to view the phone number or email them, or I can also choose to click into their profile. And what this will do is take me through to all of their information. So that includes their CV here in full form, and also the uh, uh, 
that that candidate has made. So that means uh, these are the jobs that the candidate has been applying for on caterer.com. So sometimes it can be helpful to know that because it will give you more insight into what the candidate is looking for. So that's one way that you can look and look at a candidate from there. You can also view or download the CV from these different tabs here. Once you've viewed a CV, it will come up with this blue tick box here and it will show us when we've previously seen that candidate. So that's a really good way of knowing when you've saved a search what you're likely to have come to when you've been searching. Any search that you've run, I would suggest that you save it. So at this point, I've got 900 candidates within a certain location. That's probably a bit big for an initial search. So what I might do is narrow that down to candidates that have been active within the last seven days. So I've just changed that filter. Still quite a lot of candidates. Um, I may also choose then to narrow it down by location. So I might just look for candidates that have been in central or a desired location is in central London and a couple of surrounding areas and narrow that down again. And now I might choose to save my search. So you can click that button, which is save at the top there, and you can call this um, roll whatever you would like. Nobody else will see this. So I could call it chef de party, test search for the sake of what we're doing today. I will save that there. And what happens now is when I go back um, to my main screen or if I go back to do a new search, you can see all of the saved searches below here. So you'll see here, this is a search that we've just saved uh, uh, with all of those candidates in it. So once you've set up these searches, and we would recommend you do that for the roles that you're recruiting regularly, you can go back into them, and that way you can um, filter with and change the criteria of what you're looking for, and it will give you a, a pool of candidates already there to start with. If you do have candidates by email as a feature on your account, what you can do is manage it from here. And what that will do is it will send you, you put, pop your email address in here, and it will send you new candidates that fit the criteria that you've entered for that search every two hours into your inbox, up to 20. So you can put multiple email addresses in there as well to ensure that you come up uh, with sending the right candidates to the right people. If you are interested in that feature or that's something you don't have on your account at the moment, have a, have a chat to your account manager and they can talk about setting it up for you. So once I've saved my search, if I click back into it and run it again, what I might then like to do is sort it by when somebody's been last active. Because again, what that will do is bring all of those new candidates to the top of the list or all of the candidates that are the most active on the site currently. So we really would suggest it's a very good idea to save those searches and save those criteria for you. There's lots of different features as you're scrolling through that you'll see um, will make your life a bit easier when you're searching. One of them is this arrow button here. So if I like the look of this particular candidate, what I might do is click the arrow button and that will bring their profile up in a new tab. And I can go back to my main search screen and continue to scroll. So if I was looking through and I found 10 candidates that I liked the look of, I might arrow up their profiles across the top and then have a look at them and close them down once I'd viewed or downloaded their profiles. So that's a good way of managing it. Also on the front of the screen, you'll see here as I've just hovered over, you'll be able to see those applications or what the applications that person has made to what locations and to what job titles right from the very start of when you view their profile. So hopefully that will help you make a better informed decision as to whether it's somebody that you choose to contact or not. Um, if you want to email that candidate from here, what it will do is it will start this up in your Outlook or whichever your um, default email service is, and it will be ready to go from there. So you can copy and paste a template that you have all ready to go if you like. Let's close that down there. So once you've got um, all of that set up, there's really lots of ways, uh, lots of ways that you can change the way you're searching. So rather than just starting with a job title, which is also a very good way to start a search, you could purely start with company names. So if we were to run a new search, we might simply put a list of hotels, restaurants, or, or um, places that we would like candidates to co have come from. So I might start a search by just looking at those company names. So for example, I might put um, Hilton or Mercure, like this, and then run a search. 
Once I've done that, I can then narrow it down by the current job title of those people. So that way I might see everyone in the, in our system that may, may have been a head chef that's worked for one of those organizations. So that can be a really good way of narrowing down if you're looking for a very specific type of skill set as well. Um, there's never one perfect way to run a search because everyone uh, writes their details slightly differently. There'll always be fringes of information. Uh, but what we would suggest is there's no there's no harm in giving it a real go. You really can't mess it up. Once you've run your initial search, we'd suggest you save it. And then once you've done that, you can change it around as many times as you like and hopefully narrow down what you need. If you're finding in your search result that something is coming up, that you don't think is very relevant or that's not really fitting the criteria of what you're looking for, the other thing that you can do is add an and not. So I might say and not Nando's because I'd like to see chefs, but I'm, I'm not really sure that they're the right kind, for example, for my hotel or my restaurant. And then I might run that search from there. And what that will do is it will exclude all of the people that have that word in their CV from my search result. I could then save that search over the top or, and then that way I could overwrite an existing save search. Um, so let's pick one here. So that one. And now the new criteria that I've added has now been updated to the search that I've run. There's also a help button up on the right hand side here, which has covered a lot of what we've talked about today and it explains a lot more um, about what the different buttons and features relate to. So if you ever do get stuck, please feel free to use that. Uh, we really hope that, that, that this has been helpful today um, and we really uh, hope that you'll take advantage of using the system as much as you can. Uh, please let us know if you do have any questions. Otherwise, we hope you find uh, the candidates you're looking for and have a lovely Christmas.